Let's take a look, too, at another type of authentication mechanism. We've looked at centralized, so let's talk about decentralized authentication. Decentralized authentication is another term for remote authentication. The idea is that the administration of authenticating and deciding which subjects can access which objects is pushed down to a machine or to an area that's closer to the objects that are being controlled. In centralized authentication, everything is pulled up to one central authority. Decentralized, we're pushing it out farther and closer to the objects actually being controlled. Now, to do that requires more administration overhead because you may have multiple, in fact, you almost definitely will have multiple machines that contain authentication information as opposed to one central machine. One good example of that would be a security domain. Now, keep in mind we're covering security domains, talking about security domains as opposed to any vendor-specific domain concept. In the context of security domains, we're looking at a sphere of influence. This sphere of influence would define a group of objects that a subject can access. Now, this looks a lot like an ACL, an access control list. And in a way, it really is, but it's always going to be defined in terms of one local area. So one subject may have a sphere of influence for one subnet, but yet when that subject accesses objects on another subnet, that sphere may look a little different and the access rights afforded that particular subject on a different sphere or on a different domain may be wildly different than on the original domain. Using domains as a decentralized authentication mechanism gives us the ability to define local areas in which one particular subject may have very high security access rights in one area of your system, and the same subject would have very restricted access rights in a different area.